Okay, before we get into the, the lesson, I just want to go a few, uh, a few, a few a, through a few things with you. Say that three times real fast. Uh, like we was talking about, Elaine has got the Bible study from the 18th to the 22nd. It'll be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It'll be from 5 o'clock until 7.30. All helpers appreciate it. And, okay, I've been talking to Sharon uh, about homecoming. Are we going to have it this year? Let's take a vote on it. How many want to have it? don't want to have it. Okay. What I'm trying to come up with is for Clarence to be here because he's always the one that preaches it. So I'm trying to work out a way where he's going to come and Sharon's going to get with him and find out when they're coming. And I know August the 14th uh, Christian Cavaliers will be here and I know Pastor Grace will be here. He don't want to preach, and there won't be no preaching that day. So when then we're going to have the pitch in, and that's on August the 14th. But if Clarence wants to come in August, like towards the end of August, for homecoming, does anybody have a problem with that? It's usually in September, right, Mavis? Yes, last September of the month. Last of September? Last, might be, last, last week September. of September. Well, if we can't accomplish that, will that hurt anybody's feelings? Just whatever we can come up with. Uh, so that's where we stand on that chair. So, has anybody got anything else that they can think of that you can take care of? Talk about? Okay, let us pray before we get into the message. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, in your house. Father, what a true blessing it is to be in the house of the Lord. Father, we know that the true house of God and the true church is on the inside of each one of us. This building is just a place that we gather. But Lord, we just want you to know that we're thankful for that, that we're thankful we live in a free country, that we can come and serve and worship you in one and to be with you, Lord, in one mind, in one body, in one Lord. Father, I just praise you and give you the glory for all the things that happen here each and every time we come, because we know without you, it cannot happen. Father, may the anointing be here. May you bless us in this service. May you glorify yourself and bless us. Father, we pray and ask this in Jesus' name.
You know, you have the hope of heaven. No matter, Jesus told us that we were going to go through what while we were on this earth? Amen, brother. Say it loud for the people in the back. But through those trials and those tribulations, we can be full of joy. How about that? Huh? Somebody say amen. amen. See, it don't matter what we're going through. It's where we're going to. Hallelujah. That's what you got to keep in your mind. I told Peyton the other day, I said, all those things that you dread in life, and there's going to be a bunch of them, think about all the joyous things that you have to look forward to. Hallelujah. You have the heaven to look forward to. It don't matter if they're beating you, if they're selling you, the Lord Jesus Christ, if they kill you, He's going to be standing there waiting on you to come home and you will forever be with the Lord. Think about that. Think about that. That should put so much joy in you simply. You should be jumping up and down in your seat right now. Are you jumping? In your heart? <laughs> Amen. See, we're supposed to be a happy people. We're supposed to be a light to the world. Why is that person so happy? Look at all they're going through. But they just bubble right out through it. Because that's your light that shines on the inside of you. That's your light that's shining to the world. Your love, your peace, your joy, your heart pouring out to them. Even though you're going through bad things, you're more concerned about them than you are yourself. That's your light shining. That's the Lord Jesus Christ shining up inside of you. Amen? Now you might feel like you're in school here in a few minutes, but the Lord compelled me to take this and to break this down and to see what it really says. I couldn't stand myself. I had to break it down. Something I kept reading it, reading it, reading it, and it was not leave me alone until I broke it down and I looked up the words and I found out what they mean and I just had this. I said, now I got it, Lord. Now I understand. So as we go through this, I don't want you to think that you're in school. But Jesus was a teacher. And sometimes, instead of me getting up here, bumping my chops and running at 100 mile an hour and letting the Spirit take control over me, sometimes you just have to teach. And that's what Jesus did. He sat down and He talked. And through the first part of this message, that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to do a little bit of teaching. So that's what we're going to go through. Turn to Philippians chapter 2, and Dorothy, I have never preached this. I asked her a while ago, I said, what did I preach last week? She said, oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, Mike said, he preached the cross. Dorothy said, he preached the cross. I said, no. In a way, I did. She said, I don't know, but it was good. <laughs> Philippians chapter 2. When you're there, say amen. amen. This is Paul talking to the Philippians. He, he's, he, they're kind of at odds with themselves about how things ought to be run. And Paul is telling them that, that they should be a model of humility. They should be in service to Christ. They should have instructions on how to live their lives. That they should be Joy. They no, I haven't been drinking. Except the wise guy out there is the first thing you thought of. <laughs> but what Paul's doing to them, he's illustrating the things that he has in his life. And he's trying to get them to come to the point to be like him. To be like him in Christ. And that's the way we all should be. We're supposed to be what? Christ-like. We're supposed to be the ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ. And wherever we go, Dorothy and they ought to see you glowing the light from off of you. And they say, I want 
want some of that. That's a fact. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be a happy, joyous people. Joy and happiness does not mean the same thing. But if you're full of joy, chances are you might be happy too. I know I am. But they are two different things. I want to point that out. So, in chapter 2, Paul's writing to them and he says, If therefore there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of spirit, if any bowels of mercy. Now what does he mean by bowels of mercy? What does that mean? Well, I can tell you that. I wrote it down. But the bowels of mercy are the inward convictions of a man to serve and love the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul's telling them, you've got to get those convictions down on the inside of you. It's an inside conviction. It takes some place on the inside, and once it gets down here on the inside, it can protrude outwards from the heart. You feel like you're in school? I thought it might be a wood, but it's right. this is what he gives you. And Paul goes on in verse 2. But before I go to verse 2, let's turn to Colossians, turn to your right, to Colossians 3 and verse 12. Let's see how he puts that in the Colossians. When he's talking to them. 3 and verse 12, he says this. Here's that word. Here's that word. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And if any man have a quarrel against any, as Christ forgave you, you also do you. What does that word forbearing mean? Anybody? Anybody know? Somebody knows. It means being patient. I know that's a word y'all hate. It means being patient. And understanding what they're going through. <clears throat> Not all about you, but about what they're going through. Forbearing one another in love. See, when we forbear one another in love, it ain't all about us. It's about helping lift up our brother or our sister. To help them get back up to where they need to be. Now go to chapter 2 again. See, it's about having a, a conviction of love coming out of the inside of you full of mercy. Not cutting somebody and well you're about stupid, that was about dumb. Why did you do that? No, that's not what it means. It means you going up to that person and showing them mercy, showing them compassion, showing them your love. Man, it's okay. Everybody makes mistakes. It's okay. It'll be alright. Don't beat yourself up over it. How many people have beat yourself up over something in their lifetime or watched somebody beat yourself up that never amounted to nothing and it ended up all okay? Amen? So why do we do that? Because we need to let that inward conviction that is inside of us, that has been put there by the Holy Spirit to bring out mercy. To bring out grace. To bring out love towards our fellow man and brothers. See, we are to edify each other. Edify means to what, Tyler? Lift up your brother. Tell him it'll be okay. Pat him on the back. Pat your sister on the back. Give 
give them a hug. Go through what they're going through with them. Because it's not all about you. It's about them. See, when Jesus came to this earth, and it took 33 years to leave his heavenly home, and we all know in the book of John, he talks about he was homesick, it was time for him, he was ready to go back to the Father, he was ready to go back to that, but for unselfishly, he came and he walked upon this earth for 33 years with a bunch of meatheads like you and me to get us to salvation, that we could be reconnected to God. He was unselfish with his time. He was unselfish with his life. Do you think he enjoyed being here after what he come from? See, it's an unselfish lifestyle. Jesus said he come to serve. He didn't come to be served. He didn't come to have it all. He come to serve. And to come to do the will of his father. He done nothing unless his father told him what to do. And that's the same thing with you and I. When we read God's word, and we do read God's word, right? Okay, amen. Good job, Dorothy. Dorothy came to me the other day and she said, I know one thing after that sermon. I'm going to read my Bible a lot more. <laughs> Praise God. That's what it is. When you're reading this word, this word is what, Danny? That's God Himself. That is the Word of God. That is the Word that became flesh and walked among us. Jesus so unselfishly came and gave His life as a ransom for you and me. And when we see people going through hard times, and I'm not here trying to beat you up, I'm here trying to love you. I'm trying to show you what love really is. Jesus went through horrible things while He was on this earth. But He still stayed full of love. No matter what He went through, He stayed full of love. And Paul picked that up pretty quick. Because Paul goes on in a later chapter, and he says, no matter what state I'm in, I've learned to be content. Because He was following the Master. He was following His lead. And that's why you and me as Christians should be the joyous people in the world. And look what we got to go home to. The Bible says you can't even comprehend what God's made for you. Shirley's ready to go right now. I can see her. She's ready to jump out her seat. Praise God. But you've got to remember, this life is not about us. It's not about all the things we can gain. It's not about all the white pretty houses and white picket fences. It's not about that at all. It's just not about materialistic things. It's about spiritual things. And the Bible tells us that once we come to Christ, we are to think about things above. Now, does that mean God don't want you to have a pretty house? No, it don't. Does that mean God don't want to bless you? No, it don't. What it means is, put first things first for the kingdom of God. Because where is the kingdom of God? The kingdom of God is on the inside of us, preparing us for the kingdom of heaven. You live whatever way you want to live down here, and then you want to go to heaven, and then it ain't no ways near what you're living down here. Then what are you going to do? Uh-oh, well, I didn't expect this. See, this prepares us for where we're headed to. Do you send a kid to college before you send him through first to twelfth? No. This is, this is the same thing. God is preparing us for where we're going. And God is telling us how to be while we're here. We're to be full of love, full of joy, full of mercy, full of grace. We're to be a light that shines to the world. That when people see us, they don't know what He's got, but they want some of it. Now I know that you know, and I know, that that's hard to do. And sometimes it's really hard to do. But see, you know, it takes one little seed that you plant in somebody's heart. I was watching a video the other day, and this, this guy gets beaten. The cop caught him. He said, 
well, I guess we're running over 90 mile an hour. The cop had to run 100 mile an hour. And he said, well, I guess my guardian angel will be with me. He said, no, well, the cop told him, I'm your guardian angel. You don't need to be running that fast. And he said, he got to thinking about all these things. He got to thinking about, I put his life in danger too, because he had to run over a hundred to catch me. And he drag stripped. He said every time those lights would go down through there, his father-in-law told him, You're, why do you tempt God like that? Why do you tempt God? Every time you get in that car, you can get killed or kill somebody else when you don't have to get in that car. You don't have to cut your days short on earth. See, that one seed that that person planted in his mind, he thought about that, and he quit all those things. And he got into thinking, and he became a really good Christian. It just takes one seed, one little light ray that I can hit Mike with to change his life forever. One beautiful thing said to somebody that can't stand your guts could change their life forever. It's happened. I know. I've, I've seen it. What what you to, what they said to you, that is really See, we plant the seed and we let the Holy Spirit of God go do the work. Amen. Okay, let's go. Now I'm starting to learn how Danny preached for two hours on one scripture. To learn that. You know, the, it's, it's amazing if you can read something in here. And a lot of people, this is their big downfall. Well, I don't understand. I don't understand it. That's the first thing you read about. I don't understand. Well, and that's probably true. But the more you read it, and the more you get out of it, things that I've been over a hundred times. That I could read now, I thought, wow, I've never seen that. The depths of God are unsearchable. And if the more you read it, the more you learn. And the more you're trying to learn, the more God will show you. This is His living word. This word is alive. And we as Christians should use this word. When we go through hard times, when we go through trials and tribulations, this is our crutch right here to be able to stand through the bad times. Amen? Amen. Okay, verse 2, Paul tells them, he says, Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded. Be like me. Be full of joy. You fulfill my joy. Let me see you be joyful. You'll fulfill my joy. Do you want to be, and I've heard people say this my whole life, and, and you tell me if I'm telling the truth, Danny. Do you want to be around some sour puss? Do you want to be around somebody that's joyful? Amen. You listen at the back?
See, we're to be full of joy. Everybody say that word with me. You're dead. Say that word joyful. We're supposed to be joyful, happy, smiles on our faces. Am I perfect at it? No, but I try to be. I'm working on it. See, God wants us to be a light. This world is dark, dead, and dying by the day. And I see Ralph back there. He knows. He's just going like this. It's dying by the day. Society is so warped that it's not even fun. And it can take somebody like you or I to let somebody see that love and that joy and that peace showing them mercy and grace that cause them to want to come out of their minds. You know, when a person's down and out, that's one of the best times for the Holy Spirit to do it. That's one of the best times. When you see somebody down and out, try to help them. Try to help them. Try to spiritually help them. Show them love. Okay. Second part of that. Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like minded, having the same love, being of one accord and one mind. He's telling them to be of one accord. Be of one mind. Be like me. Be Christ like. He's not telling them to be like him. He's telling them to be Christ. Because he is being Christ. Jesus is our model. He is our model that we should live by. And we should go to great extremes to be that way. And I know that it takes time. Verse number 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife. What strife? What strife? Anybody know what strife is? Tell them why. Strife is to be angry or bitter in disagreements over a fundamental issue. See, the fundamental issue here is that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Messiah. He is the Son of God. He is the only way to God. And they are trying to get him, get them to see that He is the fundamental issue. But they're probably fighting about all the side dishes. Well, He smokes. And he's done this. And he looks at women. And they probably go through all that over and over and over. Do you know how much trouble that causes in churches and divisions that cause in churches? What is the main goal of Christianity? The Lord Jesus Christ and Him alone. He is the way, He is the truth, and He is the life. And no man can come to the Father without going through the Lord Jesus Christ. So they're all tied up in all this stuff. So the Paul's telling them, no. It's about Christ. To be like Christ. Strife was disagreements over fundamental issues. Well, Jesus would be a fundamental issue. Wouldn't he? You know, he's the main goal for us to be like him. Or vain glory. What's vain glory?
prideful things in a person's heart will get them in trouble. Pride cometh before the fall. That's a good problem. So we need to stay away from that. Paul's telling them to stay away from that. Don't do that. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Woo! Is that hard to do?
Let's go to 1 Corinthians 13 and 5. Back to verse 4 here, where it talks about not to look on your own thing, but to look on other things, other things, more so than yourself. I wanted to read this scripture out of Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 13 and verse 5. And he took upon him the form. 
form of a servant. Yet he was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself. And he became obedient unto the death, even to the death of the cross. Dorothy, I'm preaching about the cross today. Because that's where all the love started. All the love started when they beat Jesus and then drug him to that cross. Ever so willing to go. As a small child, when he got up big enough, probably four or five years old, he knew that his destiny was that cross. Can you imagine? What he felt. Live it. Have you ever had anything in your life that you dreaded? But yet it was like six months down the road. That's kind of like torture, ain't it? <laughs> yeah. Something you dread really bad. Well, Jesus dreaded it for 33 years. But still, he was obedient to God. He knew that was his destination. He knew he was the only thing that would please God. That his sacrifice was it. And that he was going to die on that cross. But he was obedient. He was willing to take it all. Because he stretched out his arms. And they drove those spikes in his hands. And in his feet. And they gouged him. And they beat him. And they cramped the crown of thorns on his head. Because he loved you and me. No greater love does a friend have for another friend. Than he laid down his life for. See, Jesus laid down His life to take sin out of the world. That whosoever should call upon Him and come to Him should be saved. Now you and I, as Christians, we don't have to go to the cross. Oh wait, yes we do. Yes, we do. We have to pick up that cross every morning when we get out of that bed. We have to pick it up and put it on our shoulders and carry it and act like Jesus acted all the day long. Amen? That's what we're supposed to do. Jesus said to pick it up daily. Carry your cross. Carry your cross every day. Be like Jesus. Try to reach somebody that's not saved. Try to be kind. Be full of grace and mercy and love and peaceful to people. Even if they treat you like dirt. Be kind and loving to them. Because the Bible says that love never fails. And when He was on that cross and He was dying and He gave His last breath and He said it was finished, it was finished. All you have to do now is accept Him as your Lord and Savior and it is finished again. You are saved, fine, sealed, and delivered by the Holy Spirit of God. You are now a Christian. And that's all He wanted. He wants every man to come to Him. And then once you come, He wants you to be like Him. How many times as a kid, growing up, that we all wanted to be like this one or that one? Am I speaking the truth? And that's all Jesus wants. Jesus wants us to be like Him. For real. Full of love. Full of grace. Full of mercy. For bearing one another. Edifying one another. Lifting up the name of the Lord. That's not too much to ask of us. But what gets in our way? Ourselves. Ourselves get in the way. Who's guilty? I'm the only guilty one in here. I just don't think so. I ain't buying that. Now she's pointing to Dorothy, then you get to point me. Ourselves get in the way of doing 
what God wants us to do. But, here's the key. Here's the key. When you pick up that cross and you start your day and you're doing things the way God tells you to do them and you're doing the right thing, Listen to me. God will usually bless your songs. And I can witness to that from my own life. He will usually bless your songs. And I've said this a hundred times since I've been in this world. When your kids are good and doing everything you told them to do, what's the first thing you want to do? Well, little Jimmy's been good all day. He's been good all week. I'm going to take him and get him ice cream done. God made us in His image. If we're like that, is God not like that? See, when you put God first and you show those Christ-like features in your life and you do it the way God tells you to do it, He's going to bless you. It's just plain and simple. I've seen it too many times in my life. Too many times. But we need to do it full of love and joy and peace and show that dark place out there what it's like to be a Christian. Being full of joy is not being all happy and bubbly and giggly and carrying on. Joy is knowing that you have a home in heaven that no matter what you're going through here, you can keep that joy because you know that one day you are going to live with the Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever and ever. It's never going to stop and He has a home up there. He made a mansion for you and you are going to live with Him forever. You can't even begin to understand what He's made for you. The Bible says that. Think about that. If God made this earth and He made it all so, so perfect and made it work perfectly, man messed it up, but He made it work perfectly. Look at all the, the tech, technicalities that are in this earth, that are in that tree. In the grass. He made all these things. Why can he not make a beautiful life for you? He can't. And that's why that's what we draw from. We draw from the joy of that. We draw from the joy of his promises that he made us. Well, I'm gonna go through this. I don't care. They can stone me down. They can kill me. They can do whatever they want. But I know the Lord Jesus Christ is with me right now. And every time they throw a rock. Is that true? That's true. Stephen did. They stoned him to death in the middle of the street, and Paul stood there watching. See, we we are to be a people full of joy. And most of the time, if you're full of joy, you're happy. Because Paul told us he's learned to be content with whatever state he's in. You know, if I'm in a boat drowning and there, there, there's water pouring in and we're dipping in five buckets out and there's ten buckets going in, I'm content. Why was he like that? Because he had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ and it stuck with him and he knew what his home was. He knew he had a race to run. He knew he had to spread this gospel. He knew he had churches to build and he got the word from the main man. That's why. See, he is full of joy because he knows nothing can take that away from him. Nothing can take your salvation away from you. You have got a home in heaven. Jesus suffered and will 
was obedient even to the death and even to the death of the cross. Jesus never once, never once complained. The only thing he did, he said, if it be possible, let this cup pass by. But he knew when he asked that, it wasn't possible. He knew he was destined to cross. And wherefore, verse 9, wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, and the things in heaven, and the things in earth, and the things under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of glory of God the Father. Hallelujah. Jesus is the Lord of glory. And every time that you're out there and you think these people are being so bad to you, you just remember, your Savior is the Lord of glory. And everything that He has, He has for you. And everything that you're going to get from Him one day is an inheritance from Him. And it's going to be on you and 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 me. And we're all going to get the inheritance that He has for us. So we need to keep this in mind when life's trying to beat us up. When we're going through hard times. We need to be a joyful people. Because you can't change people out there if you act just like them. You have to be different. You have to let something catch their eye that sees the truth. Second Peter one and verse ten says this. It says, Wherefore the rather, brethren, give diligence, that means give your all, to make your calling and election sure, for if you do these things, you will never fall. See, God says if you'll do it the way I tell you to do it, you'll never fall. He didn't say you would never have hard times. He didn't say you wouldn't have tribulations. He didn't say your truck might not start to fall. But he said you'll never fall. That means when you have those things coming against you, that means that you'll be able to walk right through full of joy full of peace, knowing that you're calling, you have been called to the Lord Jesus Christ to be one of His disciples. That's what that means. 
that you'll never fall. For the 
same cause also ye do ye joy and rejoice with me. Are we going to joy and rejoice with Paul and run a race like Paul did? Because when we know what the prize is, that's what we're supposed to do. got steel toes, you can kick it. You hush that my friend. I'm trying to be a good example down here. It's not that Jesus is not with you. Never ever think that Jesus doesn't love you because you're going through a hard time. Because He does. Would you not call going to the cross a hard time? A trial? A tribulation? He knows what they were. He knows how many times Satan's going to come to tempt you. Because he was tempted of Satan. But what did Jesus do when he came to tempt him? He used the word on him, brothers and sisters. See, Satan went smart enough to figure out that Jesus was the Word. So he was using Jesus on Jesus. And that wasn't working out real good for him. Worked out real good for Jesus, though. But Jesus sent him on the way. Amen? How many people are so full of joy right now in the counter sitting still in your seat? I see one person in here that's full of joy. One. You want me to tell you who it is? Randy. And if that's the way we should look, thank you, Lord. That right there is the way we should go through our life. Nothing bothers him. Just happy go lucky. And act like nothing's going on. Which I know he knows that. I'm just using that as an example. You know, happy go lucky in a serious way. Don't let the things that come against you cause you to fall apart. Don't let the things that come against you cause you to fall apart. Don't let the things that come against you to fall apart. Don't let the things that come against me cause me to fall. 
fall apart. We've all done it. Every one of us. We've all done it. Headed up there, brother, take it. But we shouldn't. It's all going to be okay. You win in the end. But you can either have a miserable life here and be a miserable Christian, or you can be a joyful Christian. And Paul told them, joy, be joyful like me.